Suspense. Here we are. Okay, here we go. Uh, Sharon, did you want your... Oh, thank Yeah. Hey, thank you. Everybody. You need to put it up. Today. And uh, thanks, Barbara, for selecting me. Hold that mic up. You gotta put it right by your lips. Yeah, is that better? Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, so thanks, Barbara, for selecting me for the Big City Reader anthology. And thank you, David, for putting this together. Um, I'd like to dedicate today's reading to uh, uh, memory of my dear friend, editor and uh, uh, mentor, the poet Larry Fagan, who passed away from the Royal Day weekend. Okay, so, uh, okay, so I'll read uh, the, uh, from the third section of the manuscript Kugel, and then uh, I'll read uh, some new words. Rain. I can't always tell the rainy days apart, their opaque distances, their individual drops, the plainness of our lives. The whole world was troubled. It was too wet to make hay. Sheep and cattle began to die off. The rain fell for weeks at a stretch. There was no wine that year in all of France, not much bread either. And surely to you my life has been darkened by hours spent in cars, waiting for the door of a building to open, for something to happen, my subject to go somewhere. A core of certainty limits you to being here, so you wait. Try not to miss the ultimate point in this interim race for life where you two have become a finalist. This next point is called uh, Verbena. Uh, Verbena said no, meet me at Meg's, but the distance was great. We had to fly in order to see each other. I'm standing on a pontoon. Sue was making an abstract, wrapping a wire around a cardboard tube. Another person was disambiguated by Felicity. Meg had a disturbing way of eating something about tasting life for the first time and getting bored. It's a beautiful day for nothing to happen, to pour into our mugs, to open our middle hearts. Absolute clarity makes its dutiful way to the surface of love. This is the standard way of explaining loss. I was, we were, they better be. It's freezing on the platform, waiting for the pipes to clank, will they? Something's afoot, we are afoot. This next one is called uh, Bildungsgedicht mit Schnauze. Joining hands was a great idea, allowing us to face the future with a child like Dunheim. We bought a dog. We named him Leibniz after the biscuits. Why must potato eater have a tobacco pipe with a cube at the end for a nose? There is something in you that I look for in others to no avail. I have lost any inclination to laugh. You hold me, which at times seems like so much ballast. It takes no one to make it proud. Indefinite place. I've taken on too much. People often say this when they mean nothing of the sort. Wet wind, speeding clouds, interminable indecision, but a well-rubbed assurance. Some presentiment of a vast capital reached me obscurely like misgivings and streaming along many radii. I counted chimney pots, some round, others square, fly in a lump of sugar through a window pane in the clock tower. This next poem is uh, a uh, basically an improvisation of a lesser known John Keats sonnet. I'm going to read the sonnet first, and then I'm going to read the improvisation. The sonnet is, the first line is, The day is gone and all its sweets are gone. Sweet voice, sweet lips, soft hand, softer breast, warm breath, light whisper, sem tender semitone, bright eyes, accomplished shape, a glorious waist, faded the flower and all its budded charms. Faded the sight of beauty from my eyes. Faded the shape of beauty from my arms. Faded the voice, warmth, whiteness, paradise. Vanished unseasonably at shut of eve, when the dusk holiday or holy night, a fragrant curtain love begins to weave, woof of darkness, thick, for hid delight, but as I've read love's whistle through today, he'll let me sleep seeing by fast and pray. My improvisation is called Countenance of the Sky. Kids are gone and all their sweets are gone. Avenue A is okay, so near to me. Quick Jack Robinson, my work on keyboard and harmonia, the sad-eyed lady. More urgently, what are you eating? Gilded croissants. I woke up late. A galaxy of gunk, junk, far corner of the room. Bottles I drank from back then. I lost an old friend. Here she is again in the margin of the dreams. 
sudden newness of skin, otherwise ordinary blue streaming above beyond fiction. The reading eyes cross the black river where the young congregate among resounding thuds of balls. The moon adores the courtyard with a comic hornet flashing forth at the right moment, rapping at the gate goes unnoticed, but the beleaguered vines finally catch a break. So I'm going to start reading from a series of uh, new work. Uh, but, uh, we're closer to the mic. To uh, since the last uh, six months or so. Um, necessary things. This is also a prose poem. The madness of forgettable things, an eternity of promises yearning to become pencil lead. Such pinks and oranges splash across the continents of my father's globe as sunlight edges over the bookshelves late in the day. It takes a while to say something intelligent about these kitchen appliances shaking with hiatuses and even longer to develop any zitz flush with welfare and print with this kind of work. Unbearable profusion of books on chairs so you can't just sit down wherever you like. The simple grid of a dishwasher unmoving like a hallucinated island that suddenly engulfs you with delirious streams of water lost his breath. The detergent capsule expands into three valves and scooped out like an orange seat but loaded in the middle. A steady trickle on the kitchen floor forms a puddle. So I'm going to finish with a, 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 a reading a selection from a new sequence uh, called Emblems, and uh, I'll read uh, maybe about ten or so. One, in your letters and poems, dualisms, dialectics tell a friend whose death comes to life, or rather to light, about us. Just when then was a clear prospect to a dream, a ripple in the skin where someone's tongue had been. Do you have enough of it to stay in the game? I am fed up with this insecure tremor like a root shivering underground. Two, the stiffening of egg whites is contempt for the world felt worse than hunger. Mind the bow riders filling in the gaps with a hint of whiskers. The dog shakes itself dry, the most remarkable bath towel. Pseudonyms tighter than ceilings, the tram passes under the cathedral. Three, Sores was a bad hair day at Coco's. What followed me no sense at all, lost forever. A poet is born into a childhood, not a country. In the hills I spot a bad new rock on a muck. A faint impression, the flight of swallows lightly troubled in the somber sky. A wakeful poignancy like a dawn walk after the best party of your life. Four, how artless a man devises mischief and on his lips there is a scorching fire. I was wrong the way, the way Montaigne was wrong seeking stillness among the natives and their hatchets, but for courage or luck melting away like memory wax, the slippage of forgetting made us invisible, though what good is a bird's eye view. Five. Money was talking to itself. You thought it was speaking directly to you. They called it the dark crystal, yellowish rocks burning fingers in a white heat rush. Near the end of the trip, exchanging one slip for another. Miami, New Year's Eve, new hotel, cafe table, or desk. TV, view of beach, boating types. I heard Mule Island was peaceful, no mules there, mostly underwater. Sitting sternward in the sun, drinking beer, reading a lot, slept sometimes. <laughs> Six, my friend's name's then my name without much ado. Frankie from middle school, the is and the was, double knotted, where the tropical water began and the green air ended. Rum was in short supply that year. Our lives concealed in plain sight oddly bleached and remote. A bachelor scattering of magazines three times in my life. I've heard that cellophane sound standing between a corpse and an open window on a summer's day. Seven, with an epigraph from Melville's Moby Dick. White bear at the poles, white shark of the tropics. Instances of phrasing freezing on a red letter day. The story ends before the book, but how? With the children going through grass gates, Order of brightness of eyes downcast, design of faint stars. Curious chin outstretched, petals tossed in the air. Eight, e efforts at euphemism, yet they go on about locker room talk. What else? Not my kind of thing. Shadow of an old lady, showgirl of long ago. Veritably as Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane, the seeds of one's undoing can be traced to one's earliest days in Montreal, where all the trees are relocated to winter so as to aid snow removal. Meanwhile, Weinmeier used a cane, shorelining against the edges of the room to get back to his seat. Nine, this farce of an arcade with coated patterns for a new season. 
his arrival and departure. I tried to refuse the outcome. I put on blinders and a sleeping mask, but still it came bearing gifts, a watch, wallet, a dive of chocolates, and it wouldn't stop. We, when we confronted it, nothing, a faint smile of acknowledgement. 10. That one wouldn't be able to cope without spending at least three consecutive days in the city was the unintended complication of having a home in the suburbs one could return to. Whatever was missing would suddenly exist in a dream, and you'd feel like yourself again as if the mind had its own place. I had long ago lost interest in the ocean, the environment, and was out of touch with just about everybody, starting with my own family. Thank you. That was Ryan Nowlin, everybody. Yeah. Ryan and our final poet of the day is uh, Mr. John Paul 